Five years. In this video, we are going to discuss about protobuf or protocol buffers. Protocol buffers are new way of communication between backend services. Protocol buffers already adapted by few companies and they are going to be adapted by many other companies in coming years. Especially IoT companies. If you want to know why protocol buffers are getting more and more popular, please stay tuned until the end of this video. You will come to otherwise you are missing something. And also if you are new here and I would like to request you to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get a regular update about Whenever any product development is taken off, we usefully think of few points. Those are what protocol we should use, what kind of format the data should be in, the size of each and every message that is transferring between services, and also the performance of the transferring the messages between services, like the serializing and deserializing the data. And also, what is the data format that requesting service is expecting for? So these are the very few points. Of course, we may think a lot of other things, but these are the very important points. Most of the applications or services don't do their tasks alone. Either they have to send the data to another service or they have to store the data in databases. So this continuous communications happens between the services. So the serialization process comes with a lot of questions. The consumed service must understand the data sent by the producer application or service. The format of the data received by the consumed application or service must understand the data sent by the producer application, especially the type consistency. So whatever the data received by consumed applications and the data types in the data is the same as the original one and the compatibility issue. If we change something in data, whether it is uh, compatible with the previous version, like backward compatibility and also performance. So how fast this data transfer can happen between the services. Look at uh, why we need another protocol. Nowadays, modern server architectures are built on the constant communication of services like uh, REST APIs, GraphQL and uh, remote procedure calls. And the services generate thousands of messages to each other and load the network, which requires a lot of resources. We need a faster way to serialize and transfer the compact messages between services. So protocol buffers address these all issues. You may ask, why can't we use JSON? Of course, JSON is very powerful and it has a couple of features. We can look into one by one. First of all, JSON is a readable document. It's a text message so that you can open it on any text editor and you can examine it. And secondly, it's a self-contained. So whatever the consumer needed, everything can be embedded into JSON object and you can start sending it and accepting it without any synchronization. Thirdly, it's extensible. Easily extends the data storing in the JSON object without any harm to the clients. And also JSON has disadvantages by one. It's very expensive. In case of high volume of data, the JSON object is very expensive. It consumes a lot of system resources. And secondly, unclear data types. It's a kind of a feature added advantage, but it's not for all other applications because some applications, they need specific data types. You cannot define the data types in JSON document. JSON message is bigger in size, even though the size of the content of the message is much smaller than the size of the JSON message. So that's a lot of overhead. Protobuf addresses all these points, taking in different approach. Let us look at what is actually Protobuf is. Protobuf is serializing protocol like a JSON and XML, but unlike them, Protobuf is not readable by human beings since the serialized data is compiled into bytes. Protobuf is invented by Google in 2008, and they have used protobuffers, protocol buffers a lot in their backend services. So we can trust Google and without doubt we can use in our applications as well. As per the Google documentation, the protocol buffers definition is protocol buffers are Google's language neutral, platform neutral, extensible mechanism for serializing structured data, but smaller, faster and simpler. You define how you want your data to be structured once, then, then you can use special generated source code to easily write and read your structured data to and from a variety of data streams and using a variety of languages. When it comes to JSON with the protobufs, protobufs are very less in the payload size and the syntax of protobuf message looks like this, message of person, object name, 
and uh, there is a variables defined here id and uh, required means it's a mandatory field and its data type is integer 32 string name and required and repeated repeated means it's a list of addresses you know if, if you have more than one values for any specific attribute that is mentioned as repeated it means it's a list of addresses and optional so if you, it is not mandatory you can define it as an optional attribute the numbered protobuf fields are for backward compatibility as per the documentation the new fields could be easily introduced on intermediate servers that didn't need to inspect the data could simply parse it and pass through the data without needing to know about all the fields so basically it says that easily we can introduce the new fields after that and so that the we don't need to make any changes in the existing application code changes or client changes still it is able to understand the new fields so there is no any problem with the backward compatibility in future if you want to make change in your messages or schema still consumer application understands your message and you can parse it when protobuf message is much smaller than size of json it's almost 60 percent smaller size than json and it is much faster in encoding and decoding if you see this image you know that how much fast it is encoding and decoding the protobuf messages compared to json especially in decoding it consumes very less time protobuf approaches instead of taking the schema with every message we can save space and power by declaring the schema beforehand for example person dot proto the proto file extension is dot proto so this is the person dot proto message which has the four fields you can define the proto buff schema and you can put in your java project and you have the proto buff generators or compilers to generate the code using this code you can encode and you can send it to the other application so that other application also will have if it is a c sharp or ruby application it has its own protobuf compiler code and you can decode the message and you can understand the so basically protobuf message is a binary code it's a machinery so if you want to know more about different programming generators for protobuf you can look into the url given here and also i provide this link in the description section you can go through that we have person that proto message and you can put this proto file in your java project and you can build the project so that it can generate the compiler and it can easily understandable a c-sharp project c-sharp project also will have its own protobuf compiler and it decode the and it can understand the person that proto file so without any synchronization or serialization code there are two different projects which are in different languages that can understand person dot proto message proto is a binary code in json is about but it is good for only small volume of data when you have the very small amount small volume of data you can use json if you want to investigate the data you can use the json and also when there are different kind of messages especially when you are sending messages directly to the browser or client application which is a web application yeah in case your server side application is written in javascript so you can use json data from backend service consumed by web application directly you can use json protobuf is a high volume of data so when you are expecting there is a high volume of data between your backend services you better always use protobuf and also performance is really matter so when you are building some application and you want to communication should happen in a, with great velocity you must use protobuf so when you have similar kind of messages the conclusion is if you want to send some messages to browser go with json and if you want to send messages between backend services, go with protobuf. Actually, protobuf takes the serialization process one step further with gRPC, which is a way to call other services by sending messages. But this is the subject for other video. Before wrapping up the video, let us look at the summary what we have discussed so far. We looked at what is protobuf and what are the advantages, disadvantages of JSON so why protobuf came into the picture and also we looked at difference of approaches between json and protobuf and we came to know protobuf is good for backend communication as usual i would like to request you please subscribe to my channel if you like this video please like it and if you don't like this 
please put them in the comment section definitely i will try to correct what i didn't do it well share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can learn good one